Well, the bakery started in 1887 by my grandfather. After him, my father, Joe, took it over and he took it over in the 30s. And then he got married in 1942. And he um, had five daughters. All my sisters worked in the bakery. They liked it, but they all got married in their early 20s and had their families. And I was the career lady. I came and I, I carried it on from 1980 to 93. I'm good, I'm good. You're going to come to see me. I'm in the middle of an interview. I forgot to turn off my phone. I'm being inter... Okay, could you come Saturday morning? God bless. Bye bye, bye. In the early 80s, um, there was what you call a price war with bread. And back in the early 80s, people weren't aware, weren't able to differentiate between real bread and processed bread. So small family businesses like ours all closed in the late 70s, early 80s because of a whole change in culture about bread. And it was brought on by people who were into making money as opposed to making bread. Whereas I come from a tradition of people who were making quality bread to nourish people, to keep people healthy, which is the most important thing in our lives. I've been doing it for 42 years <laughs> and longer, I suppose, yes. <laughs> I worked with my father in the bakery and, um, you know, it was great to work with him and he was so proud of baking. He had worked with his father and my father was born in 1904. You know, it's nice to be the same family doing the same thing in the same place for 130 years. So it's some history like, and we still have stayed small because our motto has always been, small is beautiful. Would you like me to make some Irish soda bread? Yes. I start off with flour, and this is 100% Irish flour. 10 grams of salt, 13 grams of sugar. And we have what we call the raising agent. So this is bicarbonate of soda and cream of tartar. 50 grams of margarine. And you make that like breadcrumbs. This, they call it spotted dog because it's very spotty. Is this one of your favorites? This is my favorite, yes. And I, white Irish soda bread, I love too. So you just knead that. Get it all into the center and turn it over and we just press down and roll it out and then we make the traditional cross and we egg wash it and I'll put it in with the peel and that takes 20 minutes Now, we, we're going to go upstairs to do the rest, but I just must check the bread in the oven. The soda bread. Mmm, do you smell it? Just check that it's baked. Now, yeah, they're baked. So we can have some of that with our tea. When the bakers come in at night, they come in at 10 o'clock at night, they switch on these ovens um, first thing, and they take two to three hours to bring up to temperature to bake the first batch of bread. 
then they load the oven. Now, it takes two men to load that oven in 20 minutes to put in about 160, 70 large 800 gram pan loaves into that. Most bakeries have ovens that you, you, you turn on and they're thermostatically controlled. And when it reaches the temperature, it cuts out. But not with these. They're only as good as the man working them. The man working them has to use his head as well. So we'll help ourselves, Emma. Is that OK to a Chester cake here, where they're all going to have a Chester cake? It's a spicy, and it's a fruit, and it has, it's sweet, and it has a lovely shortcut biscuit pastry. Hello, how are you? How are you, Mike? How are you? Good. When we bought the premises, which was adjacent to the bakery, it was a saddler's. The saddler used to work here. So I called it the Saddler's Tea Shop. This was my baby. I, may, I added this on to what I inherited. Very, very proud, yeah. I fulfilled my dream in life. Which is? Which is, I made it to what it is today and it has got recognition. And I suppose when you achieve what you had a passion for in life and did it well, and to come out the other end healthy and ready to enjoy the rest of my life. It is a great fulfillment for any human being. And it's so important to do what you love to do.